Hey guys, Jason DeLong here with Heartland Homes KC. Hope you're enjoying this fabulous day, but I wanted to reach out, had uh, some questions that Laura had today that she wanted to go over just in the general process uh, when it comes to buying and selling a home. So um, hi, Laura, how are you? Hey Jason, thanks for having me today. Good, good, good to hear from you again. Yeah, so today I just wanted to go over some frequent questions that I feel like people have. They're kind of little questions, kind of just silly little questions, but I think we all have them. And I just kind of wanted to hear your opinion yeah. about what the answer is to them. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to dive in. So first question, how do you know what home you can afford? Yeah, that's a good question. That's uh, typically the first place to start. Um, make sure you're not looking at anything you can't afford. Um, but yeah, I mean, really uh, getting with a lender will, will help on that. But even upfront, people can kind of do their own homework um, and just look at what their income is, what their expenses are um, and see what kind of what monthly payment, like if you're currently renting or have a house and looking to upgrade, you know, what you can currently uh, feel comfortable paying without, you know, making yourself house poor um, and, and, you know, not being able to travel and do the things that you what you also like to do. So, and I think, um, I mean, a good rule of thumb, depending on what your, you know, one income or two incomes for the house. I mean, you know, use 25 to 35% of your income um, on housing. Um, but you just got to look at what your expenses are. If you have car payments, cell payments and, and, you know, whatever else you have out there, but yeah, that, I mean, you just got to make sure it's something that you're comfortable with. And even, I even tell buyers that if a lender says, Hey, you're good up to 2000 a month. Well, if you're only comfortable at 1500, then you, you don't necessarily need to go up to your max value. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so, cause a lot of lenders will give you your max and you just yeah. don't want to get to that actual max. Yep. Um, my second question for you is, so when you're going through buying and selling a home, do you buy and sell them at the same time or how do you go about timing all of that? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, yeah, it just it. There's no perfect answer on that. Um, it just really depends. I mean, if you have if your house now um, is in a good area, it's updated or it can you know be market ready here shortly. I typically say you know on the other hand, like when you're going to look for a house, most sellers just like you know the house that you're selling, most of them don't want to um, look at contingent offers. Um, if they do, they're not going to be real negoti negotiable on the terms or price. So I say get your house ready and then, you know, go out and look, find the one you want and either make an offer, put your or put your house on the market and get it under contract. Um, you know, kind of do it simultaneous um, or, you know, you could go out and, you know, look for look for a house and get something under contract, ask for an extended close, say 60 to. 75 days that way it gives you two to four weeks to find something yourself um, or, or to put your house on the market. I'm sorry, put your house on the market and get it under contract. Um, so kind of one or two ways, but it just really depends on what the, the scenario is and the situation, kind of what you're looking for. Um, obviously if you, if your house, if your current house is in a good price range, a good area and it'll sell quick, you don't have a whole lot to worry about. Yeah, definitely. There is, it's kind of a question with no perfect answer, but um, each situation is going to be different. Yeah. Yep. So on terms of like trying to find a home, do you usually tell people that there's a certain amount of homes they should look at before they buy one? So they don't just buy the first one that they see. Yeah. What do you tell people when they ask you that? You know, um, yeah, sometimes it happens where people like the first house they see. And I mean, in, I've had them buy the first house they see. Um, I we always have that conversation though. It's like, all right, guys, are you just liking this because this is our first one, or do you want something else to compare it to? And you know, we've gone out and looked at other ones and say, hey, let's just compare apples to apples. And you know, I might go to two or three more and say, no, 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 this is this is the one. But you know, you also got to look at if it's a hot market, you know, and you don't jump on that one, you, you might possibly lose it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it happens. It's like love at first sight. Very true. Um, so on another note, um, a lot of people, when they go and they do find that home that they love 
and they're going to put in an offer, they often think about what offer they should put in and what do they think the seller will see as a fair price versus what they're actually trying to sell it for. Right. Um, what advice do you have on when you're putting in an offer? What is a fair price versus what they're asking for it? Well, I think on that, you know, again, you kind of look at you know, what type of market it is. I mean, if it's a buyer's market, um, you might have a little bit of time to <clears throat> uh, make a lower offer and, you know, or some different terms and then wait for a counter back and kind of go back and forth on. Now, if it's a seller's market, a hot market where you might have competitive offers, um, you, you need to look at that and possibly maybe even offer over. Uh, list price depends on you know how the price that how the house is priced too because I've seen more there's just price low with that in mind and you know in that situation it makes it tough because it's kind of like a psychological um, <clears throat> effect where if it's priced ten thousand low a lot of buyers don't want to offer over that list price and if they don't they're probably not going to get the house because it's underpriced undervalued the way it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just depends on what type of market it is and, and kind of the strategy going in. Um, but obviously the stronger offer, um, you know, can mean different things, not just price. I mean, you could have a, a bigger down payment, um, have a conventional loan versus uh, FHA, um, you know, different ways to make it a stronger offer and not just on price. Definitely. So after you get, you know, your offer and everything like that, you found your dream home. A lot of people ask, how quickly can they close? What would mm -hmm. you say to them? It probably depends, I'm guessing. It does. Um, you know, if it's a, you know, you don't have a lot show up on inspections and the appraisal can get done fairly quick and no um, hurdles to cross with that. Um, it can go fairly quick. And sometimes like the last couple of weeks of a 30 day close, you're just kind of um, waiting on the title company and the lender and the underwriting. So I would say, I mean, we've seen them in 21 days, but typically you're 30 to 40 um, on average, but they can be, be quicker if, if need be. Interesting. Um, so you did mention home inspections. A lot of people wonder, mm -hmm. should I, should you get a home inspection? Do you always have people get home inspections? Yeah, we always advise that. I think it's just a safer route. Um, you know, no matter how many times you've been to the house, two, three, four times um, for second, third showings, you'll see a lot, you know, cosmetically and just visually, but you can't see behind the walls and, you know, test the plumbing. Um, so we've even on some of our rehab properties we buy, we've started getting inspections. I mean, we're used to seeing um, and looking for things that are out of place or needs repair. Um, but you can't catch everything. So in the attic, if it's got say knob and tube wiring or some other thing that's just antiquated or outdated that most buyers will probably, um, you know, want to ask to be corrected, you know, that's something that you want to find out up front for sure. Yeah, definitely. So the last one that I'm going to ask you is kind of a buyer's remorse one. Okay. So somebody, they put their offer in, um, let's say they change their mind. How mm -hmm. long do they have to back out? Uh, typically, a, an inspection period is uh, 10 to 14 days. And within that time frame, you know, you can get your inspections done. Also gives you time to kind of <clears throat> think and make sure it's the right house for you. Um, so, and, and that being said, within that inspection period, you're entitled to your earnest deposit back. You know, you can cancel for any reason. It could be a broken light switch cover. Um, <clears throat> but as long as you've done your due diligence, uh, you should be able to get your earnest deposit back. Um, so that's that's what I would recommend, you know, during that 10 to 14 day inspection uh, window or whatever you ask for. Um, if it's after that, you, you might uh, end up losing some of your earnest deposit. It just really depends. But um, that goes back to like when you first write the contract, you kind of want to make sure it's the house that you, that you like, and you're not continuing to look around for something better. Definitely. It probably doesn't happen that often, but. No, but it does. <laughs> Any other things you want to add to, um, things that you hear from home buyers a lot, uh, <clears throat> that you wanted to answer? I know people can leave comments and ask you different questions, but is there anything that you hear a lot that you wanted to add? 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's quite a bit out there <clears throat> off the top of my head. You know, as far as um, from the buyer side, I mean, just right now it's a low inventory market, so a lot of them just get frustrated with the fact that there's not a lot to look at now. Yeah, um, we're starting to build that inventory back up a little bit, just going into the, in the fall season, um, so it's getting better. Um, but yeah, just I'd say lack of selection really, and then. Um, if the, if it is a hot property or, you know, one that's, one that's going to go quick, um, just having to make a rush decision. So that's, yeah. I mean, for anybody that, that's, that's tough. No matter if you're, if you sold a lot of homes or bought a lot of homes or not, it's still, um, kind of a rush decision is never the best. Definitely. Um, it's always great to have an agent on your side when you're buying. Right. Um, so if someone's looking to buy in this market, um, how can they contact you just to kind of talk about their options? Yeah, just um, our Facebook page is a good way. Um, just give us a call. Our number's on there or you can call uh, my number directly, which is 816-651-5190. Um, those are probably the two of the best ways. Um, and we're, we're always around and available. I'd love to talk. Perfect. Thanks so much for joining us today, Jason. You bet, Laura. Thank you. Bye.